Hi, I'm Yvonne Pran with Effective Church Communications, and this is a Canva tutorial for church communicators. In it, I'm going to talk about three big mistakes in creating Bible verse graphics and how to correct them. In our recent survey of church communicators, one of the top requests was on how to use Canva more effectively. So I decided to help by doing some short, actionable lessons on it. And here is the first lesson. Now I'm assuming that you have a basic working knowledge of Canva. And with that in mind, I'm going to jump right into it. Now what I'm going to talk about today is I know you need help to make things look better, maybe be more effective. And one of the most important things that we do as church communicators is we share verses out of the Bible. I see this all the time. We want to do that on social media, on Instagram. Here's a picture of, of a little screenshot of Instagram on PowerPoint, on all sorts of things. That's a great thing to do. And again, you can do it in whatever format you want. However, I see so many churches and Christian organizations make huge mistakes. Just drives me crazy looking at them. And I've, I've actually been wanting to do this lesson for a long time. The mistakes that people make on Bible verse graphics in all the different forms. Now I'm going to show you some of the examples of what I mean. These are just uh, screenshots off the web. And, and please, I don't mean anything icky towards anybody. A lot of people make these mistakes mistakes, but I'm going to show you the mistakes, explain why they are not the best ways to present Bible verses and things like that. And then I'll show you, then we'll actually jump into Canva and I'll show you how to correct these errors. Okay, the first one is lack of contrast. And I see this all the time. This wonderful verse, you know, fear not for I am with you, be not dismayed for I am your God. And it, that's a great great verse, but you see how there's not just a whole lot of contrast, and so it kind of fades into the background. It's it's hard to really see what, you know, I exactly what it is. Now, one other thing that I want to comment on with this verse is um, the graphic. What does a desert have to do with that? Um, we should always really try to make our graphics either very, um, and sort of not having to do with anything, like the next one over here, the one on the right, it's a, a good background, it's just colorful and all of that, but again, the contrast, there's gray text on a colored background, it just, you you can't see it. it. It just doesn't make the verse stand out. So that's the number one mistake, lack of contrast. Then the next mistake, bad type choices. Um, we a lot of times forget that people actually, our, our number one goal is we want people to be able to read things. And we pick out people who, who don't know what they're doing really in typography, pick out fonts that they think look interesting. And for some reason, people think if it's something's interesting, then people will read it. Nope, it doesn't work that way. People just, they, they can't read it. It doesn't make sense. Um, the one on the right too, especially, is not good now because it's kind of halfway cursive and a lot of younger people can't read cursive at all so it, that's just not a good a good font it just it just really isn't clear it's very hard to read slanted on that angle that isn't all that that great either and this next one uh, there are a number of things that are wrong with it the um, it it's a very light font and so it, it sort of fades into the background especially in the lower parts of the print but then why the person felt the need to put all these lines and stuff like that I don't know but it's very very, very distracting from the image, it's from the verse. And then another one, um, this is where people really minimize what's important. When we're doing these things, we're doing them because we want the verse to stand out. And so on all three of these, you have these, well, admittedly, very interesting, nice graphics, but the verse itself is kind of minor and people don't go to look at these things for pretty pictures. We want them to be encouraged by God's word. And then the other thing, uh, this center one here, um, a little bit of an anachronism. Again, we want our images to emphasize or at least to be kind of neutral like this sunset is. But here we have this verse out of Genesis, God saw it 
all he'd made and it was very good. Well, that's nice, except you have a little surfer guy down there. And I kind of doubt if a little surfer guy was around at creation. Now, maybe he was. I don't know. Um, maybe Adam, you know, whatever. But... Um, that's really kind of distracting. Uh, the person that did it could have just cropped off that bottom part if they really like this image. But we need to be careful about these things if we're trying to emphasize God's word. So now with these little um, cautions in mind, let's go to Canva and I'll show you how to do verses without these problems. Here we are in Canva. You um, can do everything that I'm going to show you to do with the free account. I do recommend the pro account because there's a lot of additional things that you can do with it that I will be getting into in other lessons. And churches can get a free account. It's, it can be kind of a hassle to apply for it, but um, you will eventually get success. I personally pay for mine. I don't... Um, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything, whatever, and I feel like it's one of the best purchases that I make all year. But anyway, having said that, let's just jump right into starting something for Instagram. This is actually, even when I'm going to change things for uh, some of the different resources that I do, for some reason I just always start with Instagram, but also too, I have a personal Instagram account that I like to share verses with, and so I, I use this a lot. But anyway, you just hit the little thing, create a blank. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that verse um, that uh, fear not for I am with you, etc. Now, what I do so that I don't mistype anything is I will first of all select a text box. You go over here to the little text icon, click on that. And then I just click on add a heading because it's easiest and it's biggest to see. So I'm going to leave that right there for right now. And then I'm going to go over to one of my favorite websites, thebiblegateway.com. And this is where you just put in a verse and you can look it up. Um, just type it in there. For, I think this is kind of a mistake that they have where if you move it over, all of this comes up. But just ignore that. I've already typed in Isaiah 41.10. And then a little thing that you can do is if you click on this little box, this little icon here, it will add parallel versions. And if you want to see different ones, you can just scroll through all kinds of, of different ones. I, these are three that I use all the time, so that's why they came up. I have the Living Bible, uh, the Message, and Isaiah 41.10 out of the New International. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, um, just ignore those little things, hit Copy, and then go back over to Canva and your design, and right there, Make sure it's highlighted and do control V paste and boom, it's in there. Um, that's so much easier than retyping it. If you have a saying or anything like that, you can always just, uh, you know, copy and paste it in there. And then I like to go ahead and make the reference part of it. Okay, now here we have our verse. Now I just kind of leave that alone for right now. And now what I want to do is I want to put in some background. So you can either put in background, they have just a whole section of backgrounds if you like them, or you can go down here to Pixabay and Pexels. These are completely copyright free websites for free images and you can just type in a topic and see what comes up. Uh, sometimes it's kind of interesting just to type in the word God to just see what they come up with. And of course they have all kinds of different things. Now I've actually looked at these ahead and what I thought because you want to keep in mind you want something that um, I think for a verse like this kind of a neutral background can be good. So I really like this because to me this image of the galaxies shows the power of God and how magnificent he is and to me that's a great literally a background for a verse about him. So you just click on that and then what you can do is you can stretch it out to fit your box. Now 
obviously, and you can click off of it, the contrast is not very good at all. And so what we might do is we might just select all on that, and then you go up to text color, and let's see what happens if we do it in white. Well, that's pretty good. It's, it's not horrible. You can see it better. Obviously, we'd like it larger. And to make it larger, you can do a couple of things. You can either change the sizes up here, or you can change it by just pulling out the handles, and you, you can pull them out by the side, and then you can tighten it up like that, and then place it there, um, just however, however you want to do it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of uh, change my text around a little bit, and so that it's a little more natural breaks. Oh, one thing I didn't do on this last one. Let me do this. Um, if you, when you're going to the next line, if you backspace and then you hit, you hold it down, shift, enter, that will put it right below it and that keeps it, uh, it keeps the spacing and the centering better. With this typeface, it's not as obvious how it can be off, but with some others, this makes a big deal difference. So anyway, again, Backspace, enter, and um, so here we have our verse. I like to make the reference a little bit smaller, keep the focus on the words themselves. Alrighty, now here we have our verse. Now this isn't horrible. Uh, the contrast is, isn't too bad. A uh, good, strong, bold text. This is Lato Bold, and it, it really is a very clear, readable text. And you can see it even over this rather busy graphic. But let me show you something that I do all the time, which makes things much easier to read. Again, the most important thing is that people read what we have. So what I do, go up here, just move your little marker up there, go to Elements, hit on this little box, and then make it just come over the type. And then what you do is you go up to the little three dots, and where it says position, I'm going to move it backwards. And you see how then your print really stands out. Now we can kind of size that better. But when we do it solid like that, you can't see any of this great image that we have. Now, in some instances, that might be OK. You might just want to have the verse really stand out. But let me show you a couple other things you can do. First of all, you can go again to the three little dots. And this one, when you highlight this, that means transparency. And so now what you can do on that, I know these things are not real clear. That's why I'm showing all this to you. You just move the little slider. And you see how this enables that. Let me do it even a little bit more. Transparency. OK. And you see how you can see through to the wonderful image of God's power, and yet just that square that um, is semi-transparent, you can read the print so much easier. Now, let me show you a couple other things on it. First of all, what if you didn't want it sort of picking up that color, but you wanted another background color? What you can do is you can click on that box and then go up here to the color. And what's really neat that Canva does automatically is it pulls out different colors from the image. And so let's see what it would look like if we use this one. Ooh, and I like that a whole lot better. It, In some ways, it doesn't stand out as much, but the printing is still really clear. And so I think I'm going to keep that. Now, let me show you how it changes if you do different typefaces. Now, maybe that's a little too pedestrian or whatever, and you wanted something kind of scripty. Now, you have to be really careful with the script typefaces. Let's just go through a couple of different ones. Let's say something like, well, one that's really popular these days is Brusher. This one is really popular. 
although it might be okay for headers, see, it, it makes it really kind of hard to read. And then there's others that are lighter. Again, that one might be okay for just a header, but it makes, I think, things really, really hard to read. Now, you can't go wrong if you just do a basic serif typeface. Let's look at what this one looks like. And here, I think for nine times out of ten, something like this is really your best bet because it's very clear, it's very easy to read, it's a little softer than the sans serif typeface, it's kind of big and blocky, but it makes for a very clear verse. And again, the emphasis is on the verse, you can see it quite large, it really looks good. Now, one of the reasons too that it's better to do it large like this is some of those that I showed you earlier where people had a big picture and little bitty words, I'm sure they didn't realize how little bitty the words looked when they finished it. When you just see what you're doing here on the screen, it's really big. But you put it on Instagram or you put it on some other social media and if somebody's just looking at it on their phone, what what seemed big to you on the screen when it's right in front of you and you know that's all you're looking at it's not as easy for them to read it now let me just take this image and I'll show it to you next to the ones that I said were kind of a bit of a problem Okay, here we are back at our presentation, and this was the first example that I showed you how a lack of contrast uh, really made it very difficult to see what the verse is all about. Now here it is with uh, the redone one that we did, and you see, you can just see the verse so much more clearly. It's still very attractive, it's very appealing, but again you see the verse. The next mistake where bad type choices. Once again, um, I'm sure people did this with the best of motives, but the type is very distracting. It's very hard to read. And again, in contrast with the same, the exactly the same verse, but you can see how much easier it is to read. You get the message of the verse. And then finally, on minimizing what's important, again, instead of just this little thing that where the colors fade in and you can't tell what it is. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. Now, a resource that if you want to study more about topography, I have an ebook for you. This is in the Effective Church Communications Library. This is one of my newer resources. But this has dozens of pages of examples from different things that I've written and all kinds of tips on how to make your topography better. This is one of the foundational skills that you really need to learn to be a good designer in church communications. I'll be doing more little training videos on it but do check that out it's only the entire library and again there are dozens of books and training videos and all sorts of things on it it's just $36 a year for everything or you can just buy the one book whatever you want to do many more classes are coming so do sign up for the newsletter for effective church communications at www.effectivechurchcom.com for lots more training, for my podcast, for links, for all sorts of things, including free templates, please go to the EffectiveChurchCom.com website. And now may the Lord bless you. May He give you joy and strength as you serve Him today in church communications.